Hello and welcome to part 20 of the video series and how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be talking about the Inset Faces tool. Alright, so to demonstrate what the Inset Faces tool looks like, I'm just going to click on my splash screen to get rid of it. And I'll just be using the default cube in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on it. And I'll press tab to go into edit mode. And it is the Inset Faces tool. So I'm going to go into face select mode and right click to select one of the faces on my cube. Now what the inset faces tool does is it basically creates a smaller face inside of a larger face. Or you can also do it with groups of faces. But there actually used to be a way of doing this, or there actually still is, using the extrude tool and the scale tool. But the workflow with the inset faces tool is improved. What I mean here is you could make a smaller face inside of this larger face by tapping E to extrude this selected face and then right clicking. And when you extrude and then right click, what it does is it snaps the extrusion. It's still there, but it snapped it down to the level of the original face. So now what you need to do is tap S to scale this new face down. And there you have it, you have an inset face. But that took several steps. I had to tap E and then right click and then scale. And so the inset faces tool is much easier. I'm going to undo out of that with control Z a few times. You can find the inset faces tool uh, a few ways. You can press the W key on your keyboard to bring up the specials menu. And there it is. The keyboard shortcut for it is I, by the way. You can also use it or find it uh, by pressing the uh, control F on your keyboard to bring up the faces menu. Again, there it is. But I'll just tap I on my keyboard and I'll move my mouse towards the middle of that middle face and there we have it, an inset face. You'll notice though that the outer faces are selected and not the inner one. And I'm not sure why they made that the default in Blender, but you can change that as well as many other options for the inset faces tool down here at the bottom of your tool shelf right after you press I to inset. You can go ahead and change whatever you like about it here. You can change the thickness, so how much of an uh, extrusion or inset there is. Um, you can change this select outer so you can uncheck it so the inner one is selected instead of the outer one. Of course you can select it but any of these options that you set will be true the next time you tap I. So if I tap I again it's the inner one that's selected and not the outer ones. I'm gonna undo out of that though and I'll undo out of that. If you tap I and then click, you can always change the amount of thickness again, but you can also change the depth. So this is much like extruding. So I can make it go either out or in with a positive or a negative number. Um, and if you're working with the mirror modifier, let's say that you have a cube that's cut in half and you want to extrude the top, that's what this boundary checkbox is for. If you have the mirror modifier, you'll notice that both halves get um, uh, inset faces instead of the entire larger face. Um, so having this boundary option checked will stop that from happening. Where the power of the inset faces tool comes in though is where you're wanting to make an inset face or extrude around a corner or not on a flat surface. So I'm going to undo uh, what I have so far and I'm going to select two faces that are on different sides and I'll tap I again. But before I do that, let's see what it looks like if I try to do the same thing with the extrude tool. So I'll tap E. Uh, to extrude and then I'll right click and I'll tap S but as you can see when you tap S and I'm going to switch over to um, uh, its wireframe viewport shading you can also tap the Z key on your keyboard you can see that when you extrude and then scale it scales towards sort of the middle of the cube so in other words you're not getting a nice flat surface if you want that the reason why that's happening is because when you scale and you have many things selected it scales towards the middle of those two faces with a median point and that's because down here the pivot point is by default set to median point. You can solve that sort of by changing the pivot point of your scaling and rotation to your 3D cursor so now it'll scale towards wherever your 3D cursor is but you could put your 3D cursor right on the uh, on the corner and tap S and that might solve it but even then you have uneven boundaries. And I assume that you're using the inset faces tool because you want nice even edges or an even border around the inset face. So the inset faces tool solves this problem. Uh, I'm going to switch back to uh, medium point 
uh, pivot point, and I'll tap I, and it actually recalls that I went in a little bit, so by default it would be zero. But you'll notice because I use the inset faces tool, I have a nice even boundary all the way around, and I can again switch to the select outer or select inner, and it'll be a nice inset. Now I can keep going from here. If I wanted to extrude out these two faces, again I run into the same problem. If I tap E, you know it makes an extrusion out diagonally, again kind of going in the median of the direction of these two faces, so it's not going in going straight up on the z-axis and it's not going out on the x-axis, it's kind of going 45 degrees but then I get these 45 degree uh, faces. I don't want that. I want them to go straight up and down. So to solve that, again, you can use the inset faces tool, tap I, and then click. I don't want it to go in at all, so I don't want any thickness but I want it to have depth. So there we go. I can either go out and it also works just as well going in with negative zero point and then whatever you want. There we go. So that's the inset faces tool. It works very well when you want to make anything that has rigid geometry. Let's say that you are modeling an automobile or a plane or a spaceship. Um, it's pretty likely that you would want to have some extrusions, some hard edges that are fairly even around the edge of whatever you're modeling. In that case, you can make uh, very or get that effect very well by changing just the depth um, and it'll give you better results than just using a strude. But that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.